So we looked at the three-dimensional and two-dimensional ways of drawing the first three smallest alkanes, the C1, C2, C3. Let's, let's draw C4. Well, four could have those four carbons in a row, right? And then it's going to have hydrogens all around. so that they each have four bonds. These hydrogens get very tedious. So we've got ten hydrogens around that, and then we've got four, four carbons in the middle. Is there another way that those same pieces could be put together? Think of making it out of a model kit like this, and you have four black balls and ten white balls. Could you put it together in a different way? Do those four carbons have to be in a straight line? They don't. So if we have carbon, 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 and now instead of putting this carbon on the end, what if we put it on the middle carbon? Do you see how that's different? Here each carbon was bonded, this one's bonded to one, this is bonded to two carbons, this is bonded to two carbons, this is bonded to one carbon. Here we have one carbon in the middle that's bonded to three carbons. This is different. And then we can still put the H's all around. and it's still C4H10. But those two molecules are different. They're called isomers. And the more carbons we get, the more possible isomers there are. So this alkane has two isomers. These are called structural or constitutional isomers because the structure is different how the atoms are connected are different. So isomers are compounds that have the same molecular formula but they have different structural formulas. Different structural arrangements. So how the balls are connected, if you visualize making that out of a model, in order to go from one to the other you're going to have to break some bonds. You're going to have to disconnect some pieces. And we call this phenomenon isomerism. So we can have, um, in these alkanes that we're still talking about, we can have continuous chain alkanes where you have a single non-branching chain of carbons. It's like people holding hands, just all in a row. One single row, no branches, no forks, no splits or anything. Or you can have a branch chain. So the first one we drew in the previous slide was a continuous chain, and the second was a branch chain. Here I'll put these, uh, this is the skeletal structure. That's the straight chain or continuous chain and this is the branched chain. It was like a tree with branches, and this one is straight. So here's looking at pentane. Pentane is the alkane that has five carbons. So here we have a straight chain no branches, all these carbons are connected to each other, it just in a, in a straight chain with the hydrogens around. This is a branch chain version, where we have a, one carbon here stuck onto the middle. And this is yet a different version of a branch chain, where now we have two carbons stuck onto that middle carbon. Still the same number of carbons and hydrogens, just attached differently.
Any questions? So constitutional isomers differ in connectiv connectivity. So if we look at um, space filling models for these three, they all have the same chemical formula, C5H12. But they have different shapes, and their properties are different. Now their densities are pretty similar, 0 0.626, 0 0.620, 0 0.614. Those are pretty similar, but look at their boiling points. This one boils at 36 degrees, this one's at 27.8, and this one boils at 9.5. So the fact of their atoms being connected in a different way affects their chemical and physical properties, and we'll see a lot of that throughout the semester. They also have different names because we need to have a unique name for each different organic compound. And we'll learn more than you want to know about how to name these things. This is kind of an interesting table. And you'll note this is, you know, it says table 12.1. That's from the other book. It's actually table 1.1. Um, but here, looking at the different molecular formulas for the, for the straight chain, these would be, the, um, well, for the alkanes. And then if we allow branch chain, this is showing us the number of possible isomers. So for the first three, there's only one isomer possible. There's only one way to connect those. We looked at C4 and saw that it had two isomers. We saw pictures of C5. It's got three isomers. And then the number of isomers keeps increasing, and it increases exponentially. And you get up to C30 and you've got over 4 billion isomers. So you take C30H62, and there's over 4 billion ways that you can put those together. So you can see how we can end up with so many different organic compounds. And it can happen very, very easily.